He's an EMF deputy, or EMS deputy chief from Mesa Fire, Mr. Bill Daniel, and right away manager from the City of Mesa Engineering, Lori Greco. Come on up, Fire Bill and Lori. Fire Welcome. Fire Good to have you here, sir. Thank you. Hi. Welcome, Lori. Have a seat. That was kind of almost like fire. <laughs> that was awesome. You've never probably heard that before, ever. That's, pretty, that's good. I'm happy. To, for the first time I, that I can think of, I'm happy to see a guy with a badge on. Good to have you here. <laughs> Welcome to Mesa Morning Live. What's going on in the uh, Mesa Fire Department? Oh, a lot. Um, you know, we've uh, been pretty busy with pushing out a lot of new innovative ideas out in the community. And, uh, you know, what's been interesting, I think over the last several years, going through the challenges here we had in the city with budget crises and stuff like that, um, I really have to applaud the city manager's office for challenging each of the organizations to come up with uh, ways that we could serve the community. But we had to do it without increasing our budget. So uh, needless to say, that's been a, a good challenge. But I think we've really faced it head on. And you know, through the fire service, you know, we've always been known as a fire department, but uh, I think the reality is we're not just a fire department and more and more we're realizing that uh, we are an all hazards response and we've changed our name recently to the Mesa Fire and Medical Department to try to reflect that more in the community to show the community what we're really doing. The reality is 80% of what we do is medical based. And uh, so we want to educate the community, put it on our billboard, so to speak, on the back of our shirts and uh, really emphasize the fact that uh, yes, Firefighting is something we do and is very important, but uh, the reality is 80% of our business is medical-based, and we really uh, think it's important that we put a lot of emphasis on that in order to meet the needs of the community. That's awesome. Okay, we got a request here. Uh, please discuss the ideas that you submitted in the contest. Does that make sense to you? It, uh, well, what's funny is Lori and I were talking before we had to come up here, and we decided we are never submitting another idea. <laughs> Because nobody told us we were going to have to come up here and talk. <laughs> no, I think, I think what you meant to say was before we got to come up here. <laughs> oh, that's correct. <laughs> Not had to come up here. Well, but, but I appreciate that. Um, so what, what was submitted in the contest? So like I said, you know, being a Mason Fire and Medical Department, uh, what uh, we do is on our, on our apparatus, when you call 911 for a medical call, um, you'll get a fire truck typically with four personnel. And uh, out of those four personnel that show up, two, two of them are paramedics. Um, so on an average year, we are re needing to train in somewhere in the range of 10 paramedics a year. Um, and historically, the way we've done that is we've taken those members off the truck and put them through a program, basically a six-month program to get them trained. Well, that was a great way to train them, but fiscally speaking, it was not uh, real good for our budget. Um, that would typically cost us around $50,000 per paramedic. So through these challenges with the budget and through you know, the idea of Innovate and stuff like that, we were asked to see if we could look at some ways of doing things more efficiently. So not only us as a fire department, but actually reaching out to the community partners. And for us, one of those is Mesa Community College and the other one, uh, Pima Medical Institute, both uh, institutions here in Mesa. And uh, they agreed to change their programs, actually could meet a need for us to allow us to train our paramedics. Uh, they, they basically what they're doing is they're teaching the same class on Monday and Tuesday. So if we have a firefighter on shift Monday, they would still go to work, not having to be taken off shift and require backfill for them, go to work Monday and then they could still attend the class on Tuesday. So what was neat about it, it was actually a partnership between us and the, the, uh, the schools here in Mesa for us to, uh, to ultimately end up saving. Now instead of paying about $50,000 per paramedic student, we're uh, spending about $9,500 on each student. So needless to say, when you're training 10 paramedics a year, and some, as a matter of fact, right now we have 18 in school, um, that's a significant cost savings. Um, and so that was a big deal to us. Um, and, I, and again, the partnership was a real big deal to us as well. And uh, ultimately, I think it's actually providing a better service. And uh, we've actually been able to move our training to some of these colleges in the community. And I think that's been great for them as well. They've really enjoyed having us to be part of that. That's awesome. Yeah. So this, the savings $435,000 in, in a year, that's substantial. It, it's a big deal. <laughs> Well, uh, Lori, what would you like to uh, add to the conversation? Well, engineering department um, recommended a program where we can actually rent out existing city conduit that the city no longer needs. 
and the communication companies can take advantage of that and use that conduit to provide service quicker to businesses and residents. So our idea is to try to get that conduit out to the telecommunication companies for them to, to use it, and take advantage of it. And it helps you know, reduce trenching in the city right away and public inconvenience and pavement, pavement degradation. So. Well, as you mentioned, uh, you're, you're talking about everybody thinks of the fire department, but it's, a, would you say 80% of it's the medical? That's correct. What's the advantage to having firefighters with a medical background? I think that's a good question. Um, you know, primarily as, you know, a, as a city, we plan our city infrastructure and stuff to meet the growth within the, uh, within the, the communities. And uh, so we strategically place our fire station so that we're within a close response time. So by having our members train as an all-hazard response, you call 911 and you can pretty much get somebody there within five minutes to handle just about any emergency necessary. The other beauty is that we work here in the valley through an automatic aid system, which uh, essentially every single fire department here in the metropolitan area operates under the same guidelines of automatic aid. So if, for example, here in West Mesa, if we've got a significant fire event going on that's requiring a lot of resources, Tempe is here available to come in for the heart attack that may be happening just down the road from that fire. So, um, so that's one of the beauties of having the fire-based EMS that we do in the city. And, and, so the and communities first. help each other out a little bit? Absolutely. Because my luck, I would have like a, a, a you know, massive heart attack right on a city line. <laughs> and neither one of them would want to help me. But, that, but that, you're telling me that, that that's covered. You know, if you <laughs> slip me a 20, I'll make sure you're covered. All right, so. <laughs> we'll talk later. Um, I got a question for you on, we're talking about the seasonality of the heat and everything like that. Is, is summer more, um, do you see more medical trauma in the summer? Because a lot of people leave, so is that balanced out by, or more yeah. fires in the summer because everybody's air conditioner overheats or? You know, that, that, that's interesting because we used to see a significant trend. Um, we, you know, we have a fairly significant influx of winter visitors. And uh, being that 80% of what we do is medical, we really would see a significant you know, increase during the winter months of those medical calls. We still do to an extent in certain areas, but it seems like uh, Mesa is always a busy time for emergency responses. You know, it's a big city, and uh, I think like uh, Mr. Brady mentioned earlier, you know, we're an older city, but we also have a lot of new growth and stuff. So, uh, you know, because of that, uh, we're always needed. And uh, I, I'm not sure that we really see the. Uh, changes of the seasons like we used to. Okay, great. Anything else you'd like to share with these folks? What, what's the takeaway they should uh, walk out of here feeling about the Mesa Fire and, which is fire and Medical Mesa Department? Fire and Medical Department. Yeah. yeah. What's the, what, what should these folks feel about? Um, well, you know, first thing is I, I wanted to thank, and I think it wasn't Mike that came up here earlier with the, uh, the photos. What we call that is job security, some of those photos. Um, <laughs> I mean, kids hanging off the third floor? In a, yeah, in you know, on an air, air conditioner unit. Um, it's tougher than getting a cat out of a tree, isn't yeah, it? Well, a little bit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I think the takeaway is, yeah, we, we really are here for an all-hazard response. You know, we are not just the fire department anymore, uh, and we've embraced that concept. And uh, we're embracing that concept not only with the emergency response, but with a lot of the other... Uh, needs that we're seeing in the uh, social services community uh, paramedic type of stuff. And, uh, you know, we certainly are here to be part of the community and uh, be, uh, I, I think, join hand in hand with the community and trying to really provide a service that helps meet their needs. Here comes a question from, uh, from Clyde Happy. How are you able to improve heart attack recovery? Well, recovery is a, that's, that's a good, good question to ask. I'd actually, I, I think a, maybe a better question to ask is what have we done to improve the survivability of cardiac events? And, um, you know, Mesa is actually nationally thought of as kind of being on the forefront of emergency medical services within the community. And we've been involved with a lot of studies with the uh, University of Arizona, for example, um, and even with the state with DHS. One of the studies that we did years ago was a project of changing the way we do CPR, and I think probably a lot of members in the community have seen it. We really have started to go to a compression-only type of a CPR versus what we used to know as a mouth-to-mouth -mouth, um, back in the day. So by changing the way we do that and really trying to educate the community on the importance of early defibrillation, we've actually seen our survivability rates of cardiac events go up from being in the 15 to 20% range to over 50%. 
And you know, within my 19-year career in the fire service, I would say single-handedly, that may be the greatest improvement we've seen. Compression only as opposed to the... Yeah, and it's, you know, part of it's the compression only, and then we also have the advent of the AED, the automatic uh, defibrillators that we're seeing more and more in the community, and trying to educate the community and, uh, on how to use those. Um, one of the things that the city uh, council has been really pushing hard is getting AEDs in every single city building within, uh, city-owned building within the city of Mesa. And uh, that's a project we've been working on for, uh, well, actually a couple of years, but it's really come to fruition over the last year. And those are going to be actually put out in the, the buildings uh, here in the next probably six months with some training. And uh, again, I think that's one of those things that's important for us to, to be there for the community. That's, I saw one of those at Sky Harbor one time. I saw a guy go down and boy, within 20 seconds, they were, you know, they're easy to spot on the wall. They're boom, boom. And he was, um, he survived it because of that. Yeah. If anything bad happens here at Crescent Crown, we go to the Heineken Maneuver. <laughs> that's, that's where we crack open an imported beer and we hope they pull through. How is that for a plug, Neil, huh? Come on. Uh, well, um, all right, here's a question. I got to ask all the, you know, that's the beauty of this app. Ask Lori about the importance of fiber. The importance of fiber, well. <laughs> Boy. It's a joke. <laughs> Please don't tell me we have diagrams. Do <laughs> <laughs> you care to expound on that? Because if you don't, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, this is what happens if you don't have enough fiber. <laughs> that, is, that is a bad intestine right there. It just allows broadband service services to travel from your service provider to your business. Oh, okay. You, I, was, I was going fiber <laughs> medically. <laughs> I know. That's beautiful. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for, uh, for popping in, and, 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 and I'm glad you did have to come up here and visit with us today. You did a great job. We are, too. Uh, you. And you know what? As, um, as residents of the Valley, thank you so much for all you do. You're, you guys truly are the heroes when... Uh, that, that we sometimes forget about, but boy, when we need you, you're the first ones we call. So thank you so much. How about a nice round of applause for Bill and Lori. Thanks, guys.